Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following me on my journey, which seems to know no end, thankfully. You see before you a black box with a gold stamped logo on it. The logo is probably familiar to almost everybody out there. It's a Twisby logo. Probably haven't seen it in this design or color before. Other than that, it's just a box or a sleeve over a box. If we go to one end, we'll see a description which says it's a piston filling fountain pen. And that's pretty much a description of the Chinese above it. And the M, I think, stands for medium nib, but I could be mistaken. But it does have a medium nib. It just slides off. Twisby's good at minimalistic packaging, which I think is excellent. Because you just need something to secure the pen during transit. Uh, not necessarily designed for retail. But it is something that should provide some functionality. And also maybe as a storage container. So let's just pop it open. It's secure. We see that the green is a user manual, which is incorporated into the packaging, which is nice. And then we have this insert, which is basically explaining where you need to silicone grease it and where you shouldn't silicone grease it. And without further ado, let's look at the pen. It pulls out nice. It's in that nice foam cutout. You got your Twisby wrench. You got your Twisby silicone grease. So it's all set up. And you have more instructions. Here's on uh, greasing the pen once you disassemble it. There's a little thing on uh, cleaning. So they do a nice job with giving you some instructions. But this is what really caught my eye. And... I have to be very honest with you, by the time I even knew this pen existed, it was gone, and that was weeks later. Um, I think I'm now following Twisby on Instagram. I'm not a Facebook person, so yeah, that's not where I'm going to get my information from. But hopefully this visual is coming across. I, I love this acrylic I think it's just the right amount of busy. It also has kind of a stylistic appeal to it. I think design-wise, they really hit it out of the park with this. And the first touch is feels great. I have three other Twisbees. Uh, you very seldom see them here. I think I did a review on two of them. I also talked about the 580 that had a cracking issue and they were very good and responsive in providing me parts to fix it. I like the way Twisby is uh, etched into the cap there. You know, the cap unscrews just a slight bit over one turn and we see uh, a relatively small nib. I think that's the only downside from a design viewpoint. I think they could have put a larger nib on that. But I'm not the one who's figuring out this whole thing. There's a nice ink window there. Very clear. Very, very nicely done. You have threads. And you notice there's like a black accent motif. So there's that insert in there with uh, the, the threads, which tie into these threads here, which are part of the barrel. Then you have another black insert at the bottom of the blind cap. So I'm just blown away. And the dark nib is very, very nice. And again, you can see that medium, it's a medium nib. You know, the classic Twisby uh, design with the logo there. It's just a beautiful pen. I've had this pen for over a week now, and I have find no flaws in it whatsoever. I think this is an extremely high-end pen. I don't 
own a uh, modern Aurora 88, but I would put this up against it. I have written with them, uh, many versions of them. Um, is Twisby thinking of getting into that level of, of marketing? And for the price of this pen, it's a steal for that reason. So without further ado, I think we need to write with the pen. I'm not going to be taking it apart. I got this pen used from... Uh, the pen thing in Chester. Um, I'm very happy that he uh, allowed this to move from his possession into mine. Obviously, we exchanged some currency uh, in, in, in the, uh, to compensate him for uh, uh, providing me with this pen. Uh, but I'm impressed. Like I said, when I first saw it and I figured out what it was and I went to look for it, it was gone. So now I have one. And you guys know that I was a great Delta fan, and I miss Delta. Um, I pretty much maxed out what I can get, and it, whatever you find out on the web is, is pretty pretty expensive if it's going to be worth uh, considering. And as much as I would love to add Aurora 88s to my collection, I just can't justify the pricing. I think it's definitely worth the pricing, but each of us has our own limits on what we feel is you know, we're spending and I'd much rather have more pens of a greater variety than a few pens of a lesser variety. Here we are with a size comparison to my uh, three other Twisbys. There's your Diamond 580, there's your Vac Mini, and your Twisby Eco. It's definitely the larger of these pens. And like I said, I had the 580. I expected it to be an everyday writer. I got it with a medium and a 1.1 uh, stub. And it just never made it there. I, I wasn't happy with how the cap fit onto the blind cap. And it has ink. I have an ink spot on my couch from it. Uh, the Vac Mini I also tried to use as an everyday writer because I thought the size was good. You know, and easy to carry around. But I had some issues with uh, the ink in it and... I wasn't motivated and didn't love it enough to try to experiment to find out what ink would work. The Twisby Eco has been ink since day one with Iter Shizuku Mojito. And I recently flushed it and cleaned it out and filled it back up with the same ink. So this is my go-to red pen with a medium nib in it. And it, it's always performed phenomenally well. And the other thing that's nice about it is it's consistently been a good writer. I mean, I can let it set for a couple months grab it, uncap it, and put nib to paper, and immediately I get ink. So that works very, very well. Here are the Twisbys posted. As I mentioned, the uh, 580 is not necessarily a pen I would post. The back mini, the cap screws back on to the back of the barrel. The Eco post nicely. But you can even still, this... Uh, Aurora is a larger pen. Let's zoom in on the nib end. On closer inspection, I would say that the nib in the Aurora is similar in size to the nib on the 580. I don't have a VAC 700 or any of their larger pens that they've made in the past, but I'm a, I think they have about the same nib in them. It's hard to really do a one-for-one -one comparison. Um, and also the way the nib is seated in the feet in the section is hard to compare, but it is similar. So it is one of the larger nibs Twisby has used. The section, I think, is just an excellent size. It's a little bit thinner on the 580. The Vac Mini is a little bit thicker. And, and of course, the Eco is, is a smaller section, but I find it fine for writing with. And these are their smaller nibs here in the Eco and the Vac Mini versus the 580 and the Aurora. I think we need to bring the LED light in. So I think you can see a little bit of the piston mechanism. This resin is a little bit of a transparency to it, but it is just an amazing resin. And that ink window is just very nice. So let's uh, do a little x-ray. Let's take a look at the inside of the cap. There's a nice cap liner. There is a screw there at the bottom, but uh, the, in this case, the cap liner seals that screw off. That's probably how the clip is attached. If we bring in the LED X-ray, 
Uh, this resin just really pops. And I think you can tell the translucency pieces. There's that inner cap liner, which I think is an excellent way to keep that nib from drying out. And I did have one issue with it, but I think it was related to the ink because it wrote great for about 10 days and then it just dried out. And after I wetted the nib and, and cleaned it off, the ink flow went back to what it normally was. So I'm not familiar with the diamine Aurora Borealis, so uh, we'll chalk it up to that. So here I put it in an, an impressive company of pens. You have your Pelican M800, you got your Moonman M600, and you got your Duofold Centennial, and it holds its own extremely well. This is a good size pen. Um, for those of you that are not a fan of, of bigger pens, then I would uh, recommend that you not look into this unless you extremely love it and, and fall in love with it. But of course, finding one is not going to be easy. You know, they are posted, and they're big pens posted. And on none of these pens I would generally write with posted, uh, but they do post, and if that's something you need to do, you can do it. But let's take a look at the business end a little bit closer. So from a balance and aesthetics, the size of the nib is on the small side. I'm not one who reacts that much to the size of a nib. I mean, I appreciated how it fits into the design, but you know, to me, how that nib writes on a piece of paper is uh, infinitely more important than the actual size of the nib, and also how it works with the section, how it feels, et cetera, et cetera. So the uh, Twisby Aurora definitely has, like I said, a nice design section. I really like it. It's longer than any of these other sections. Um, you know, really it extends up to here where the threads are. So all these other, and the sections are all pretty much about the same diameter within a millimeter of each other. They're both on the large side, as I mentioned. And we've given you the dimensions of the Aurora and, and these other pens I reviewed. So you can look up the reviews that I did on those if you want more information. I don't have a bottle of ink, but I was able to do chromatography and um, nice combination of colors. So I put it in the uh, dark teal family. It seems to be a, an ink color that I've uh, grown quite fond of lately and have a number of examples of it. So you definitely got your greens in that intense blue, which is very nice. And I think it looks great on paper. So for this review, I'm going to restrain my engineering curiosity and just use the pen as though I had gotten it and I just want to write with it. I don't find any flaws with this design at all. It has a good weight to it. It just feels phenomenal. Whatever they've done, whatever this material is, it just feels great. The chatoyancy is just perfect. If you want to post it, it posts uh, relatively securely. You feel the weight of the cap on the end. Um, would I write with this posted? Probably not. It's a good size, fits well in the hand without posting. But for those that want to post, or if you're in a situation where you don't have any place to put the cap except on the end of the pen, then it will accommodate you. Twisby nibs are usually excellent, and this is excellent, excellent. It's a little bit soft. You can see the, if you want to put pressure on your vertical lines, you can get a little bit more ink, and it'll be a little bit wider. As a medium nib, this is kind of like more on your Asian or Japanese style medium. It's a little on the fine side of a medium. But, and I apologize about you know, I need to keep the nib on the paper before I write, and writing over the tripod sometimes is just more of a challenge than it should be. This section is just about perfect for me. 
I can hold it anywhere. I'll have a little flare out at the bottom. Uh, you feel those threads there, but they're nothing that's going to preclude you if you want to hold it up higher. So overall, they did a, an excellent job on the ergonomics. This pen, every time I've touched it, every time I've used it, just makes me feel good. I mean, I, I can't say anything else, and I can't say that about my other Twisby pens. So um, kudos to Twisby. I apologize that I don't know whether this pen will or be available again, if ever. I'm hoping the popularity and the success that Twisby had with this pen initially will encourage them to bring out a whole series of them in different colors, you know, that type of thing. Hopefully it just wasn't a one-off that they got a bunch of, uh, of this material, you know, turned out some pens, kind of got creative, and then um, never decided to put it into the production line. Uh, shall we talk about uh, Vertex? So... I don't know. So we're going to rate this pen. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to give it a 9.8. It's my highest rating to date. I can't see any other pen more deserving of the rating than this one. Like I said, it just brings pleasure to me. That nib just feels excellent. Very consistent. Oh, this uh, ink is Diamine Aurora Borealis. Like I said, it's an ink that the owner put in before I got it, and it was full, so there's no reason to empty it. And I kind of like the ink, and I think it goes well with the pen. So my intention of this video is to hopefully give you a view of this pen there's been a few other reviews on YouTube but they've been from like first-time reviewers so I wanted to put get get my input there out to out to you my viewers um, I'd say right now this is in my top five pens for 2019 which is saying a lot because there's been a lot of really uh, nice pens that I've uh, had the pleasure to uh, to use so we've reached the end of this video, so thank you for watching. May you have many great writing experiences, and here's another example of an excellent writing instrument that is now, hopefully will make its way back into the marketplace, but at least there's possibilities, and I encourage Twisby to put it in production and allow a lot of other people to experience the joys of using it to write. So we've reached the end. Go out there and en enjoy it. Enjoy life. It's one of the pleasurable experiences of, of being alive. Until next time, bye for now. Uh, nib just glide.